Welcome to Forgotten Hollywood. There are dozens of reviews out there about the new Barbie movie, either telling you to rush out and see it or stay as far away as humanly possible, kind of in the latter camp. I made a video on it last week and thought that was that, but I was listening to what many of the top critics are saying, and they're mostly covering the same points, but there are some key things that they're missing. I couldn't talk about them in my spoiler-free review, so I would like to take this time to go over four details that no one else is talking about. Number one, there's a setup for a completely different plot. I'm sure you've heard by now that the plot of Barbie is about smashing the patriarchy and taking all power from men and women should rule the world and all that. However, there was an early scene in the movie that director Greta Gerwig fought to keep in. And this was because she said if losing it would lose the message of the movie. Strange sentiment, as it had absolutely nothing to do with the plot. And she says that it's important. But let's say this was supposed to be the heart of the film. The scene takes place shortly after Barbie gets to the real world. This is after she's been arrested and she's separated from Ken. She feels lost and sits down at a bus stop trying to figure out how she's going to find her owner. At the bus stop is this elderly woman. To exchange smiles, Barbie tells the woman she's beautiful. The woman responds that she is aware of that. Small chuckle, and Barbie continues with the rest of the movie. The woman and her beauty are not mentioned or seen again. If the movie had been about Barbie, a beautiful and confident character coming to the real world to help women and girls find their inner beauty, value, and dreams, no one I know would have taken issue with it. It may have even been the family film everyone hoped for, one I would have been okay taking my own daughter to. But this Barbie didn't do that. She put value on women because they were women and took value from men because they were men. As a woman who values her husband and sons, I take issue with this. There's nothing wrong with telling a woman or a little girl that she is beautiful. But why do they feel the need to tell men and boys that they are stupid and worthless? Number two, war in Barbie land. As Barbie Land is a feminist utopia, everything they've ever argued for or wanted is there. Mount Rushmore, all women. The Supreme Court, all women. The president is essentially Miss America, complete with sash. There are no weapons. The closest they have is a toy bow and arrow set with the suction cup arrow. No guns. The feminist movement has long been against guns, so it's only natural that their utopia wouldn't have any. Instead, Kents go to war riding hobby horses and brandishing tennis rackets, lacrosse sticks, and other recreational tools. Of course, Casey Jones of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle franchise famously pummels thugs with similar things, so the war should have been more violent than the cartoony fight we got. Interestingly, in the history of the Barbie company, I could only find one gun that came as an accessory. In the 1960s, a hunting set was sold for Ken, including hat, shirt, shoes, and a rifle. That's it. Paratrooper Barbie featured an aid drop of food and supplies, and police officer Barbie had a list of safety rules and a dress for the policeman's ball. So Barbie didn't have a gun, but Ken did. However, as the Barbies have all power and control, the Kens can't have anything they don't, so Barbie Land has no guns. Number three, the non-roll of the Kens. I heard the Kens described as essentially homeless bums that support the Barbies. But it goes a lot deeper than that. Each Barbie has their own house, job, place in society, friends, independence. The Kens have... the Barbies. It even says at the beginning that Ryan Gosling's Ken only has a good day if Barbie looks at him. Some of the Kens are shown as cheerleaders for the Barbie athletes, but the rest just stand around and compete for attention. It's not just that they have no jobs. They have nothing. They have no homes, no solid relationships. Barbie was even asked at one point where Ken lived, and she couldn't answer. Ken tells Barbie that he always wanted to live with her in the dream house, since she is all he has. Her response was basically half a second of sympathy before she set his dream on fire. None of the Barbies want the Kents as anything more than cheerleaders or someone to compliment them. These men are treated so badly that a single woman asking Ken for the time in the real world was the highlight of his whole existence because she called him Sir. 
She showed him respect, something he never experienced before. What does that say about Barbie's utopia that a single polite word would make Ken freak out? This isn't because the Kens are too stupid or lazy to keep a job. The fact that they could completely take over the place in a day shows they're not. It's just that they have been denied any ounce of decency for so long they have lost all purpose. Do they get purpose after their taste of independence? No. President Barbie is willing to give one of them some low-level non-power position somewhere, but it looks like they're still homeless and humiliated. Number four. There's something missing in Barbie land. The movie features a single character named Alan, who is even more just Alan than Ken is just Ken, as there are several versions of Ken, but only one Alan. And there's a reason for the distinction. This character has a purpose in Barbie land, but in the movie, it's taken away before you even saw him. A scene or two before Alan is shown for the first time, you see Mitch, and a voiceover says, This is Mitch, Barbie's pregnant friend. Let's not look at her, because pregnant dolls are weird. The thing is that Alan is Midge's husband, and has been since the 60s. He is the father of her children, including their son Ryan. On that note, Ryan is friends with many other kids, such as Barbie's younger sister Chelsea, who used to be called Kelly in the U.S. and Shelley in Europe. It's her treehouse that is two doors down from Barbie's dream house, but she and her friends are not there. For a toy made for little girls... There are no children in Barbie land. The opening scene features little girls in rough drab clothing. They're playing with old-fashioned baby dolls in a barren wasteland. None of them look remotely happy as this voiceover says, Once ba little girls only had baby dolls, and therefore could only pretend to be mothers. And then Barbie arrives, and it's like this 50-foot-tall woman in a bathing suit that looks like the original Barbie. And the little girls are so in awe of her and want to be just like her. So they grab their baby dolls by the ankles and smash their heads against the rocks. It's killing the idea of motherhood so they can be more like Barbie. Now, I have no problem with little girls dreaming of being doctors or teachers or scientists or whatever. The issue is that they shun the idea of motherhood, making it look like the worst option of the lot. Which is interesting, because at the end of the movie, they have the line of, It's okay to be a mom! And the montage of mothers and daughters, it's like they were trying to villainize the idea while still promoting the people who are buying the tickets for their daughters. I do think it's telling that the feminist utopia has no children. Despite the declining birth rate largely caused by the public shaming of parenthood and children in general, society seems to determined to destroy itself by creating a completely unstable world. The only marriage shown in the entire movie are Sasha's parents. Her mother is competent, strong, outspoken, independent woman. Her dad is a stupid white man who sits around the house trying and failing to learn Spanish. In other words, her parents are Ken and Barbie, the only difference being that her mother actually shows her father affection, although it's more like amused pity when he can't pronounce Spanish correctly and she needs to help him. That's it. No other couples show up, you just get the Barbies pretending to date the Ken so that they can leave them and create jealousy. No husbands, no fathers. It's a blatant attack on the family and its place in society. Without intimate relationships, there are no children, only a lone pregnant woman living in a treehouse, symbolizing what they could have had. The feminist utopia of Barbie is a dream world where there are only strong women, no men or children to hold them back, no daughters to pass things on to, no sons to love and care for, no husbands to go through life with. Just strong women banded together in an unstable paradise that will die with them. What a great thing to pass on to the next generation. Hmm? Thanks for watching. What are your thoughts on Barbie, the movie, or the doll? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell for notifications, and I will catch up with you next time.